Without a single win Sri Lanka has started their second round. In their fourth match they had to face Great West Indies again. The match was set to play in Inkanpur on October 21. This is the fourth encounter between two nations in the World Cup. Previous game Sri Lanka had a heavy beating, West Indies skipper Vivalone scored 181. Green Park Stadium, Kanpur has a capacity around 32,000. It is a test venue since 1952. The first ever one-day international in this venue was first held in 1986 between India and Sri Lanka. For this match, two Pakistan officials, Mr. Amanullah Khan and Mr. Mahbub Shah, act as the umpires. This is the 14th game in the competition and 8th match for Group B. So far Pakistan unbeaten and leading the board with 16 points. England at second but win here will give some edge to West Indies. Sri Lanka yet to open their account. On the other hand, 6 matches held in Group A, and surprisingly Australia still leading the table with 12 points. With 2 wins India at second and New Zealand on third. So far no wins for Zimbabwe. On the 11th game of the competition, India beats up Zimbabwe by 8 wickets, thanks to Manoj Prabhakar's 4 wickets in 19 runs. Manoj Prabhakar strikes for India. And now And he's done it again. What a... Ooh. And he's gone. But behind. What a delivery, moving away and lifting. Brings like a really in top gear now. That's a big hit. Real big one. It's probably on the second floor of the pavilion. And look at the crowd, absolutely delirious. Well, that's it. And happier man, Ravang Saka. Very absolutely pleased with himself. Lovely performance by India, winning, winning the match by eight wickets. Again, 12th match was a nail biter. Match was interrupted with rain and dragged to the reserve day. Even that was allowed a room to have 30 over per side game. After a thrilling game, Australia won by three runs over New Zealand. Boone scored 87 off 96 with 5 4s and 2 6s. Toward Boone smacked a 6 and moved to 87. Jones was eventually out for 52, caught in the deep by Rutherford. And although Boone followed quickly, well taken by John Wright, the Aussies had set New Zealand 200 from 30 overs to win. Rutherford did his best to get the run rate moving, but Simon O'Donnell fooled him with a slower ball. Martin Crow came to the Kiwis' rescue with a superb knock, and with a bold sweep to the boundary, New Zealand needed only seven from the last over to win. But Crow was immediately dismissed, Jeff Marsh taking a brilliant catch. Steve Waugh then sent Ian Smith on his way, and in a superb final over, Waugh ran out Snedden, and Australia was home by just three runs. Peter Mitchell, National 9 News. In Group B, 14th match held between Pakistan and England. England collapsed due to performance of skipper Imran and Qadir and Pakistan able to cross the winning total in the 49th over. Ramiz Raja scored a beautiful 100 with 5 4s and Malik scored 88 with 7 4s. Their 167 runs stand for the second wicket laid the foundation to 7 wickets win. To uh, Abdul Qadir bowling to Gatting. Grab a W and it's been given. It's gone. A little nip. Over. Philip De Freitas, the batsman. And that dunk caught behind. Sally. And a glorious stroke there by Ramiz Raja. Half volley on the leg stump, but a flick of the wrist was out to Kadir for the team score. That, I'm afraid, is Ramiz Raja's. Oh, a 
great throw by Gadding, but Ramiz Raja has got his century and deserves the acclaim. In the air, that's it. Four runs. And Pakistan have won. West Indies came with just one change compared to the previous game against Pakistan. They rested Eldon Baptiste and call upon Winston Benjamin to the side again. Phil Simmons, who got his first one-day cap in the previous game act as the opening batsman in this game as well. On his debut he already scored 50 runs. Also skipper Viv and Haynes scored centuries in the previous game against Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan team made one changes due to heavy beating for bowling department in previous two games they decided to add extra bowler to the side. So, they called Shreet Ranjaganathan to the squad instead of Asunka Guru Sinha. This is Jiganathan's second one-day international and he played his first ever game four and a half years ago, in 1983. This is a good opportunity for him to make his comeback memorable. After winning the toss Sri Lanka decided to ball first. Haynes came to the pitch with Simmons and scored 24 in 36 balls with three fours and got out first. Goes back and cuts it beautifully. That was a very fine shot. Actually, he bounced it just slightly off the bounce stop and came in. And Simon was in a really very good position. Neatly tucked away off his toes. He'll get two or will settle for one because Ramiz is coming in very quickly. That's cut between slip and point to the third man boundary, four runs. Very wide and it's gone past slip, running down to third man and it's gone for four. And it's gone for four. George was fairly wide there, had a long run. They'll look for two, they come back for the second, they'll have to hurry. And Haynes makes it. Mansoor Rakhtar. This one has got plenty of time off the back foot. His man at deep cover, they come back for the second, good running between the wickets. Skipper Viv scored just 14 without any boundary or a 6 this time and out when the score is at 115. Off the mark. Ramesh Raja fielding a deep square leg. It's put away towards long leg. Ramesh Raja runs round from deep square leg. One more to Richards. Played away to deep mid wicket. Four runs. And this one in the air and uh, over just about everything. A huge six from Richards. <laughs> it was a full toss. <coughs> uh, and smashes that one through mid wicket for four. Smashes that one, through extra cover, glorious stroke, four runs. And that's just about Richard's favorite stroke. Moving away down the leg side and driving it square of the wicket and that's Richard's 50. Simmons, who is playing his second match, scored his second 50. He got himself out when the score is at 155. Unfortunately, he missed his century and scored 89 off 126 with 11 fours. And another four. This time through mid wicket. He was trapped for space a little bit, but uh, played it very well in the end. He's hooked him for four. Well, that was a very fine shot.
over the bowler's head, travelling to the boundary, four runs. Beautiful shot by Simmons. Very wide, and it's gone past slip, running down to third man, and it's gone for four. That's going to be his 50. Well played, Phil Simmons. 50 not out. It's been a good innings. Acknowledges the applause from the crowd, and he must be a very happy man. Cindy's inning, the first ball, the third over, one for naught, the Freitas is going to Simmons. Well, that's a very positive shot from Simmons. Beautifully placed. It was in the air, but he was... Well, I suppose there may be vague thoughts of a court and bowl, but so firmly hit by Simmons, never holding back, flashed it past Foster, and that was a... Poor ball by Small, short, cut away savagely by Simmons. Gus Logie scored his maiden World Cup 50. This is his seventh one-day 50 and fourth highest score. And that's... The first six of the match, pulled down short by Neil Foster and on middle and next stump, not very bright bowling, and that little man Gus Logie got right underneath that and swung it high down under the Shamianas behind deep square leg. Six runs to Logie, 197 for four, and Logie moves on to 43, and Dujon is 39. And really the margin of this game is so finely balanced that three tight overs would leave it England's way and three... 55 for three. Four more. Just a nudge down next side in the... Uh uh, unfortunate Gladstone Small has been drifting down there throughout his spell. That's a good shot too. Again down leg side and rather uh, an expensive habit from Gladstone Paul. Yeah, Hemmings just lost his line and Logie picked it up, beautifully played, quite a full length, it's very well. For Sri Lankan point of view this was a good achievement. They were able to keep West Indies for 236 runs in their 50 overs after taking 8 wickets. Phil Simmons scored his second 50 and there was a solid 62 runs stand for the first wicket. Rish goes cheaply again. Richards, who destroyed Sri Lankan bowling camp on the other day were completely blocked. It looks like Sri Lankan team has done their homework really well. Not much double figures in West Indians scorecard. Loji scored unbeaten and almost run a ball 65 with the help of the mid-order and the tail. Opening bowler Ravi Rathnayak lead the bowling department by taking three wickets, including the top scorer Simmons. Aravinda bowled superbly and took two wickets. 237 is the target. But looking at the firepower of West Indies, it's still a bit of hard target to achieve. Patrick Patterson is the one who stood in front of Sri Lankan batting lineup this evening. He bowled out in form batsman Roshan Mahanama for a duck and grabbed two more wickets. And Dujon's dropped him. That was beautifully bowled by Patterson. He opened Robinson right up there. Patrick Patterson now to continue. Going to Tim Robinson. He was on 13. And there's no doubt about that one. That just come back a fraction, and the off stump, in fact the off stump is broken in two pieces. The jack was just laid back, but in fact there's half a stump left in the ground, and the other half down by the wicketkeeper there. That's Robinson there, then bowled by Patrick Patterson for 13. Well, almost inevitable one thought, because playing defensively to a ball which nipped back, on the back foot, rocking back, ball cutting back, is taking the top half of the off stump. England then in the ninth over. Oh, 
it's in the air. That's easily out. 92 he's out for. Never quite understood the, uh, the business of darting around like an outside half at the crease and then playing a shot. A little bit off balance, but that's a marvellous innings by Graham Gooch. Caught him. Exit Alan Lamb. Alan Lamb is out for 43. 2.50 for 5. And again, the important thing that uh, Patrick Patterson has done this with both Gooch and Lamb. When they've backed away, he's followed them, got it right into the feet. You can see he took Lamb up here. He was trying to make room. And the ball just lobbing away to square leg. And that's the important point we're talking about. The ball has really got to concentrate, get it right in the right place. And a very important wicket there for West Indies. Benjamin, who was not among the wickets, taken out Sri Lankan one down batsman Ravi Ratnayak. How quickly he picked up the short length of that ball. Or even to the middle of I don't think that truly hit the middle of the bat, but it's just. Harper, the ace spinner of the Caribbean crew, balled a superb spell and took the wicket of Runjun. Four runs, Payne's unable to cut it off. Going towards the third man boundary. Two more. Harper to Ramiz. That's a brilliant catch. Beautifully caught by Richards. Inches off the ground and he has every reason to be happy and delighted. Kurapua, who batted a decent innings fall in front of medium pacer Hooper. Oh, he bowls him and a little bit of an off spinner. Got on the inside of it. Really now, he's England's main hope to go on to a match winning innings. That's out. He's caught. It was the wide one that did it. And how difficult to play a bowler like this who bowls you full toss, full toss and half volley and sub. Gentle applause for the 100 coming up for England. Oh, what a catch. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant catch that by Carlisle Best. Walsh bowled out Sri Lankan skipper Duliap. Ball, sixth over, and Courtney Walsh is bowling to Chris Broad. The score, 14 for no wicket. And there's a shout this time, and Chris Broad not waiting for the umpire's decision, walked off. That was certainly angled across and quite a bit of bounce there, and uh, certainly beating Chris Broad for pace there. And West Indians jubilant. That's the sort of wicket they wanted early on. And hoping to get probably a second wicket and get into the English batting before the spin is after bowl. And well bowled there by Walsh's slower delivery and he certainly drew Graham Gu So, it was a tough ask. But Sri Lanka gave a money worth fight. In their 50 overs they scored 211 runs losing 8 wickets this time. Arjuna, played another magnificent innings. He scored 86 off 100 deliveries including 7 boundaries and 2 success. If another one player able to build a partnership with Arjuna, the story might be written in a different way. Arjuna was cornered after the dismissal of Duliab. This is Arjuna's second 50 in the competition and both the 50s against West Indies. This is the second highest knock in the World Cups for a Sri Lankan batsman, after Mahinama's 89 against Pakistan in the first match. Also this is Arjuna's third 50 against mighty West Indies. One notable point is that all these three 50s he scored not out. That is 63 not out in Perth on 1985, 52 not out in the previous World Cup match against West Indies in Karachi in this game. Apart from Arjuna, as heroic, Brendan made a decent start. 
he has to play safe to take the heat of West Indies firepower. Ravi was promoted but he scored just 15 runs only. Almost all the West Indian bowler did their part to defend the total. So, West Indies bowlers guide the team home, and they earn 25 runs victory over Sri Lanka. Phil Simmons was adjudicated as the man of the match. This win again gives West Indies a slight hope for the knockout round again. They were promoted to number 2 position in the points table. For the next encounter, Sri Lanka again needs to fly back to Pakistan to meet the host at Faisalabad. Let's find out about that game in our next episode.